Welcome to As If the Stones Could Speak, the art and architecture of St. Mary's Church. This is Brian Regan, and we'll begin in this first part with the architecture. But before examining the wonderful Gothic Revival building built in 1872 and 1873, let's first review the circumstances that led up to the building of that church. In the 1840s, the growing number of Catholics in this region drew the attention of priests in Madison, and a simple wood church was built in 1845 and 1846, and the first Mass celebrated in the spring of 1846. That church stood across from the current church on Route 46 and Drake Avenue, very near the current hospital site. In the ensuing years, parish numbers increased rapidly, with Irish immigrants fleeing the famine and coming to work in the area's mines. The greatest share of those parishioners lived in what is today Mine Hill, yet the church served those living in current-day Wharton in Dover and as far away as Mount Hope and even beyond it. And in 1868, a short-term pastor made a very long-term decision. He purchased 19 acres of land across Route 46 from the first church, and that land is essentially the parish property today. In 1870, Father Pierce McCarthy became pastor. Remarkably, Father McCarthy grew up in Mine Hill, and he knew that the congregation had outgrown the small church and quickly set out to build a larger one on the recently acquired property. He selected Jeremiah O'Rourke to design it. By this time, O'Rourke was well known to New Jersey priests through his design for five churches. In addition, and critical to St. Mary's story, were commissions at Seton Hall, where Father McCarthy had watched the fine chapel being constructed. O'Rourke went on to design Sacred Heart Cathedral in Newark, truly one of the great cathedrals in the United States. The church that O'Rourke designed for St. Mary's was in the Gothic style advocated by the great English theorist and designer Welby Pugin and his followers. Building again in the style of the English Middle Ages was their ideal. Thought leaders of the Gothic Revival believed that a building site should determine its design and its building fabric. They urged building churches with stone because of its permanence and potential for beauty, and they especially urged using stone found locally. They stressed that building materials should appear in their natural state and that building systems should be obvious. The latter included roofs whose structure is visible in the interior. These ideals are expressed throughout St. Mary's, and certainly the timber work above us in this church is a dazzling show of engineering and carpentry. Another characteristic of English medieval churches is an interior illuminated by stained glass windows just as we have here in St. Mary's. A few years before planning St. Mary's, O'Rourke visited England and Ireland and studied Pugin's churches. And St. Mary's has distinct features inspired by Pugin. Here is an Irish church by him, coincidentally also called St. Mary's. The scale, style, and some details may well have informed O'Rourke's choices for our St. Mary's. The new church was erected during 1872 and through the fall of 1873. Newspapers reported that the stone came from local mines brought to the site by parishioners, just as they helped with digging the foundation. Regrettably, specific mines were not identified. My father descended from an early parish family. 
and he said that from what he heard, the stones came from mines closest to the site. Certainly that's logical, as the stones were heavy and there would have been incentive to cart them the shortest possible distance. The fact that parishioners dominantly came from Mine Hill, that roads linked close by mines there to the church property, and of course that the trip was literally downhill, these create a likely scenario. I titled my talk, As If the Stones Could Speak. If we asked the stones where they came from, and they really could speak, I think they would say they came from mines called Randall Hill, Jackson Hill, Sterling, Millen, Byram, or Baker. It also stands to reason that these stones didn't have to be extracted specifically for St. Mary's. A mining shaft is created by removing rock. That rock was usually piled up not far from the shaft opening, as seen in this drawing. And in the next photograph, we see stones piled up near a mine opening. And so the real work would have been selecting the stones, carding them, and cutting them into suitable sizes and shapes. Newspaper reports also noted that the rock's hardness made it difficult to work, slowing construction. Certainly the rock in which iron ore is found in this region is unusually hard. Slow as progress may have been, no one could foresee the economic collapse that began during construction and the poor fundraising prospects that resulted from that collapse led to the decision not to build the beautiful spire that O'Rourke designed for the tower. The Gothic style is rich in symbolism and it's abundant in St. Mary's. The essential symbol of Christianity, the cross, is seen in many places, but the largest one is in fact the building itself. The transepts projecting from the nave create a plan that forms a cross. The pointed arch of the walls is not only a structural form, it can be interpreted as pointing upward, pointing to heaven. The quarterfoil seen in many places is an ancient device and became an important feature in Gothic. It's formed by overlapping circles that create four lobes or leaves. Quarter means four and foil means leaf or lobe. Think of a four-leaf clover. And in Christian culture, the quarterfoil came to be seen as a stylized cross. Rich as all of this symbolism is, the walls themselves hold more. The stones came from the dark and filthy mines where parishioners toiled, and they were transfigured into a beautiful light-filled place. What's more, some of those stones held iron ore, the same type of iron ore that the parishioners extracted from the mines and that became their black gold, the source of their wealth such as it was. And some of the church's stones actually show rust. It's rust from iron. These rare circumstances imbue St. Mary's with truly extraordinary symbolism. Before closing, let's look at the two churches side by side. The first church from the mid-1840s and the second current church from the early 1870s. Only one generation separated the two buildings. But you must ask, how was it possible to have gone from such a rudimentary wood structure 
to a magnificent high style Gothic Revival gem. To answer that question, I think we must return to the beginning, to return to the protagonist, Father McCarthy and his architect Jeremiah O'Rourke. McCarthy had a great vision for his parish, and O'Rourke had a deep knowledge of the Gothic style. With Father McCarthy as a client and O'Rourke as designer, they formed a very successful partnership that resulted in a truly superb church. We must also consider the role that parishioners played. Having come to America, having established themselves here, and having gained resources, they were able to rally around Father McCarthy's vision for them. And so together, pastor and architect and parishioners joined together to create this magnificent treasure of a church. And more than that, they left to future generations this magnificent legacy, one that we continue to celebrate. Thank you for watching. I hope you might join us for the next installment in this series on the stained glass windows seen throughout St. Mary's Church. <laughs>